What's going on everyone? Uh, today I'm going to show you how to replace the front brake calipers on your 2001 to 2004 Dodge Dakota. This happens to be a 2002, it's a four-wheel drive. Um, it will be the same steps for most disc brake vehicles um, and probably should be the same steps for the 97 to 2000 Dodge Dakota. There's just a few different configurations on uh, what style bolts they used for the brake calipers. So that's really going to be the only difference. Otherwise, it'll be all the same steps. So to get started, we're going to go ahead, pop the hood, and remove the brake fluid reservoir cap, and remove the wheels once we get it jacked up and on stands to get started. We're going to use a three-quarter drive socket. Sorry, not three-quarter drive. Three-quarter size socket. And remove um, the lug nuts and pull the wheel off. We already have it jacked up and on stands. Safety first. All right, so the next step is gonna be removing the banjo bolt that holds the line to the caliper. It's a 15 millimeter. Don't wanna lose that bad boy. As you see, mine's rusted on, so I'm gonna give it just a little love tap with the hammer. Just let that drain for a minute. There will be, it might be on the caliper, but you wanna check and see, as you can see on the caliper, there's a copper washer, copper crush washer right here. If that gets stuck to your line, you need to pull that off because we need to install new ones. It looks like there's not one stuck there, but there is one stuck right there. So I'm going to use a flat blade screwdriver to pry that old ceiling washer off of here. All right, now that the caliper line is disconnected, we're good to remove the caliper. Um, on this specific truck, it's a 7 millimeter Allen socket. You want to make sure not to uh, strip out the Allen socket. If yours is an Allen, you know, if you're hitting it and it's not coming or it's starting to twist without cracking the bolt loose, stop. You don't want to round it out or, or break it because then you'll have to deal with a broken bolt to extract. So we're just going to kind of go gentle with it at first. Same with the bottom one. Now you'll notice these slide pins are not coming all the way out. That's because the rubber around them is kind of holding them in. But now they are out far enough to where we should be able to pull the caliper off. And let it drain. Swap, um, if you're going to be um, reusing your old brake pads, Make sure to remove those for the outer pad. It's got these clips on it. You have to push in towards the center of the caliper and then lift up because it has this alignment dowel that seats in this hole. Do the same on the back side here. Pull it up like that. And the inner one just simply pushes straight over. Just has these clips that go into here. Now we'll remove the slide pins the rest of the way. Kind of push on it with my finger here. Like I said, it just gets hung up on the rubber. You could you could push these through or pull them out too, like that. All right, now the next thing you want to do, um, most of the time there's a core charge on brake calipers, so you have to bring the old one back. Um, so you want to compress this piston all the way to get all the fluid out so you're not bringing a core back, it's all full of fluid. Um, what I do is use either a big pliers and just squeeze the piston back in, or you can use a C-clamp and that'll suck it back in as well. You can see I've already done mine, it's flush, all the fluid is out of it, I'm ready to box this up and return it to the store. I'm just going to wipe off excess brake fluid so it doesn't soak through the box in my truck. 
All right, so here's the new caliper, as you can see. Valuable core, we gotta return the old one. We're gonna go ahead and throw her in the old box. And here's the new one. As you can see, it doesn't always come with a new bolt, but this one did, as well as the two new washers. You do need new washers every time. You're not supposed to reuse those, otherwise they can potentially leak. Um, one thing I did notice is this doesn't have a little rubber uh, cover on it, so I am going to pull that off of the old caliper uh, before returning it. All right, so we're gonna install our pads into the caliper here. As you can see, it actually came with new slide pins too, so I'm gonna push those um, out a little bit because we don't want those catching when we're trying to install the um, caliper. So, as always, you wanna make sure the friction pad material is facing each other it's going to be pinching the rotor you don't want to install them backwards and have metal on metal that's just not going to stop you so as you can see two different style clips this one is going to push into there just like that and then this one you see there's two holes here in the caliper and there's two little alignment dolls on the actual pad so when you're putting it in obviously the clips are going to resist you a little bit you're going to just kind of force the pad that direction so you can get the dowel past like that and you want to make sure that they're lined up in the holes which they are and now we are ready to install the caliper um, I've also already replaced the rotor on this specific truck you do not need to remove the caliper bracket like you do on some vehicles the rotor just simply pulls off and goes back on if you are replacing your rotor, make sure you break clean the mating surface where the pad is going to be uh, and wipe it off with a paper towel or a rag to make sure that you get all the shipping grease off of here so that the pads can actually grab on and stop the vehicle. Go ahead now and install the new caliper. Always remember, no matter what side or front or back, if you're doing a caliper, the bleeder should be on the top. So if we were on the passenger side right now and we are going to install this, um, it would end up being upside down. If you install it wrong with the bleeder on the bottom, you're never going to get all the air out and you're going to have a spongy brake pedal. The bleeder has to be on the top so all the air can come out. Get the caliper into place. Watch the fingers, top and bottom of the pad. They should rest firmly against the bracket, like so. And we will push our slide pins in. And as you can see, the caliper does move around quite a bit. So what I do is I, I put pressure on the pins and kind of wiggle the caliper around until I feel the pin go into the hole that it threads into. So there I can feel that one went in. And I felt the bottom one. So we should now be able to just drive them home. Just gonna start them both to begin. There we go, they're both started. And now we can go ahead and cinch them down. I do not have a specific torque value for this. I would guess 20 to 30 foot pounds, but don't quote me on that. Otherwise, just kind of tighten them until you feel it stop and then give it just a little cinch after that. <clears throat> you obviously don't want them coming loose, but you don't want them to snap either. Okay, now the new caliper came with this fancy schmancy device. Um, as you can see, when I took this apart, the old one did not have that. Um, but I did notice it, it might be some sort of an upgrade because I noticed in my truck, and then, again, I don't know if this is just because the caliper intermittently sticks, but um, sometimes when you go to hit the brakes, um, it's almost like a spongy feel, and all of a sudden, then the brakes will just all of a sudden violently grab, and the brakes basically lock up. And that might be because the caliper can move around like this. Um, you know, obviously it's a little tighter when the wheels bolted on and everything, but the caliper can move around a little bit. So I think this kind of helps hold it in place. It is a pain in the butt to get on. I'm going to show you um, the way I got it on. I'm sure there's multiple other ways to do it. This is the way that I found works best for me. So I'm going to go ahead and hook the bottom just pushes against here 
and we're gonna get this little finger into that <coughs> hole there like so and then we're going to worry about um, pushing in the center here and we're gonna get the top one in place and now what we have to do is pinch push in on this keep pressure on it and I'm using a pick you can use a flathead screwdriver whatever works best for you and just kind of get up and I'm actually getting in this hole but from the bottom side and I'm just gonna kind of bend this up into place like that and then give it a little tap with the hammer get it in the rest of the way want to make sure that is on firmly because I have seen these come off before going down the road so make sure it's in caliper all the way make sure it's nice and straight here like so and make sure it's not hitting your rotor that's a no-no as well so if it is hitting your rotor something's wrong um, or maybe you should just pull this off and not run it I'm gonna run it with it and see what happens as you can see it's a lot more sturdy now I can't move that caliper hardly so it should keep things uh, a little bit more planted all right so here's the caliper line as you can see mine's a little crusty so I'm definitely gonna take and chip off some of the rust on the ceiling surface here you don't want to take like a flathead and start gouging this you want it to be you can see if you look closely there's kind of like a little rings or grooves going around it um, the washers have those as well so that kind of helps interlock it and seal I'm just wiping it off with the rag to get any loose debris out of the way um, anything major that's going to prevent this from sealing properly uh, and then we do the same on the bottom side here if it's if it's too bad to the point where you think it's not going to seal you might want to replace this line I'm going to run it all right so I'm going to wipe off the caliper as well just get any fluid off of it just get a nice clean mating surface and we're going to take and make sure that our new copper washers are also clean put one of them on our new banjo bolt and if you're wondering what's so special about this bolt it's got a hole in the center of it with uh, a hole there sometimes there's two this one just has one but the fluid flows through this bolt essentially so um, we're gonna head go ahead and I'm gonna wipe this one more time just because it's got kind of a steady drip to it want everything clean going together this is directional this um, goes in this way as you can see from the bend here that's how it naturally wants to sit on the caliper so I'm gonna go and put the bolt with the one washer like that make sure our second washer is nice and clean put that on and then we will start the bolt I always try to do it by hand first so you're not cross threading anything um, <clears throat> you should be able to see the caliper here has basically a, it's a flat so it fits the um, outline of this brick on the line so it keeps the line from twisting when you tighten it all right I snugged it down with the impact there but I'm gonna do the final tightening with the ratchet just because I don't want it over tightened um, again I don't know if there's a specific t torque value for this it wouldn't hurt to look it up um, if I had to guess I'd probably say somewhere in the 20 to 30 foot pound range I usually just do them by feel um, you don't want to reef on it too hard obviously the bolt with the hole drilled in it it's a hollow bolt so it's not as strong as a normal bolt meaning it will shear and break easier but at the same time you don't want any leaks because that equals no breaks so you can see I just have a short ratchet here basically tightened it up until it got tight and then gave it maybe another eighth to a quarter turn just to snug it up now we're good um, we're gonna go ahead and crack this bleeder loose um, if you're doing multiple calipers like I am we're on the driver's side right now the brake fluid reservoir is also on the driver's side you want to start with the farthest away caliper so if we were doing the rears we would start by bleeding the right rear 
then go to the left rear, followed by passenger front, and then the driver's front last. Um, so we're gonna bleed the passenger side first, and then come back to this side. All right, so I've got both calipers replaced, got the pads, the rotors, everything on. Um, now I'm, this is the 10 millimeter wrench we need for this specific bleeder. So I'm gonna head and crack that loose, uh, put a little hose on the end of it. I believe this is a quarter inch diameter hose, um, just to kind of route the fluid down so it doesn't drip down the caliper and make a big mess. So we're gonna go ahead and crack that open. Now remember we're on the far side right now of the vehicle because I'm only doing the fronts, I'm not doing the rears. And we want to start bleeding from the farthest away caliper, which would be this one. So now we're going to leave this be for a few minutes and come back. It should gravity bleed um, and just kind of push the air out naturally. <clears throat> this is the only way you can really do it without a vacuum bleeder if you're all by yourself. Um, so I'm going to let this gravity bleed and then I'm going to have someone help me um, power bleed it as well which is just where they push the brake pedal down and push the fluid out so one very important thing I forgot to mention you definitely want to top off your brake fluid before doing this if you run this reservoir dry then not only will you have to bleed all of your brakes you're gonna have to re-bleed this whole uh, master cylinder which is a completely separate video in itself so we definitely don't want that to run dry Okay, so if gravity bleeding isn't working, or like I said, even if I do gravity bleed, I still do it this way anyways. Um, I've got my handy dandy cameraman in the driver's seat. He's gonna operate the brake pedal while I operate the brake bleeder. So we want the bleeder open, which it is right now. As you can see, it's loose. And we're gonna go ahead and step the brake pedal down slow. Let me know when it's all the way to the floor. when they're holding it at the floor tighten the bleeder let up and you'll pump the brake pedal a few times to build up some more pressure and while he's holding pressure on the pedal I will open this again holding floor and tighten again we're going to repeat this until we get steady fluid out of here that's not bubbling air you holding it to the floor yeah. all right pump it again as you can see there, there was air bubbles coming out, so we're going to continue doing this until it's a steady stream. All right, now this should be our last uh, brake application here. You'll see there's not any more air coming out when I loosen this. No air bubbles right here. So I'll make sure to close the bleeder back up. Again, it doesn't need to be anything too extreme, but you do want to make sure it's tight. Just kind of give it a good cinch. You don't want it sucking in any air. And we'll remove the hose and move over to the other side. All right, so we're on the driver's side here. We're going to repeat the same steps. Obviously, if you were only replacing um, one caliper, uh, you'd still, if you were replacing just um, the driver's side, you could probably get away with just bleeding this one. Um, really, you should only have to bleed... Uh, the caliper that you're replacing but um, I like to get in the habit of if you replace one just bleed both um, so we already did the one that's farthest away from the master cylinder we're on the driver's side now we're going to repeat the exact same steps there you go as we see we have a solid stream snug up that bleeder and remove the drain hose if you're using one don't forget to top off your brake fluid every couple of bleeds. It does go down faster than you might think and you definitely don't want this going dry like I said earlier. Once you're all done bleeding, not a bad idea to just kind of hit everything with some brake clean. Get all that brake fluid off of there. 
because brake fluid eats paint and not like there's a whole lot of paint going on here anyway, but just to kind of keep it clean. That way there's no question about anything leaking. If there's a leak after you do this, then you know that maybe your line's leaking or, or you got a bad caliper right out the gate and it's leaking. So I always try to keep this dry and then go ahead and put your rubber cover back on the bleeder to keep water and other debris from getting in there because once the hole rusts shut and the bleeder itself rusts, uh, you're going to have a real fun time trying to bleed these in the future. So there we are. Both sides bled, both sides cleaned off. Fluid is topped off. We can go ahead and reinstall the wheels. Once you get the wheels on, use the three quarter inch socket again. And like I said, torque them between 100 and 120 foot pounds is what I do. Again, it wouldn't hurt to look up the actual specification, but I would guess it's right in there. Make sure you go around a few times and retorque after about 50 to 100 miles worth of driving because they more than likely will uh, need to be retightened. Once you have everything torqued, make sure to top off your brake fluid. Now that the truck is on level ground off the jacks, don't forget to put your cap back on. You don't want any moisture getting in there. And you're done. And don't forget, before you put the vehicle in reverse or drive, give it a couple firm, good brake applications. Generally, it takes a few pumps um, to get the calipers to push on the pads. Otherwise, if you put it in drive right away, you won't have any brakes. Also, if you're replacing um, the brake pads with new ones, you'll want to um, get going about 40 miles an hour, somewhere between 30 and 60, um, and give it a good hard brake application. Obviously, make sure nobody's behind you so you're not brake checking anyone. But um, give it a couple good um, hard brake applications to break in um, the new brake pads. Otherwise, if you just do a bunch of city driving, um, or a bunch of light braking without doing that first it can glaze the pads over and then they won't grip as hard and uh, they can start squeaking hopefully this video helped you out if it did make sure you hit that like button uh, subscribe for more videos like this and check me out on facebook at tony the truck guy thanks for watching